Hello and welcome to the brief edition of the Health Research Report this 15th of February 2013. Before I continue any further, I want to reveal the punchline to this article before I even get into what the article is. The punchline to this report is the mechanism set up by farmer for consumers to make complaints does not function. The fax machine is typically not connected and complaints go unanswered. Again, this 15th of February 2013. And let's begin follow through with the health risk report and figure out what that punchline goes to. Alright, in an article published in uh, the Journal of Health, Politics, Policy, and Law. This uh, was a paper called The Politics and Strategy of Industry Self-Regulation, colon, The Pharmaceutical Industry's Principles for Ethical Direct-to-Consumer Advertising as a Deceptive Blocking Strategy. What does this have to deal with? This was a look what was called ED drugs. Now, ED, not standing for education, what it used to be synonymous with, since time and millions and hundreds of millions of dollars, you'd say, in advertising have been paid to change what ED is in our subconscious to our conscious. ED obviously standing for erectile dysfunction, more so than education. All right. But there's dysfunction, all right? But it's not the type of dysfunction you think. This is the pharmaceutical industry's efforts to self-regulate its direct-to-consumer advertising are, in their words, an industry-sponsored ruse. It intended to deflect criticism and collectively block new federal regulation. All right, once again, printed in the Journal of Health, Politics, Policy, and Law found. What they discovered with this, obviously the advertising dollars for ED has grown, <laughs> no pun intended, has gotten not, well, you know, they're spending more money. All right, since 2006 to 2009, they have spent more than 56%, or 313 million as compared to 200 million in 2006, leading to what their words were, billions of impressions. Obviously, also to children, which are not supposed to be advertising during those hours, but obviously, you know, cradle to great marketing, get them thinking about it when they're young. All right, and of all of the pharmaceutical advertising out there, direct to consumer, how much of a percentage do you think goes to just advertising ED drugs, erectile dysfunction? Not cholesterol, not antidepressants, not colds, flu, this, that. Well, 80%, because that's where the money's at. So, they want to look at whether these companies followed the principles in, in basically embedded in their self-policy regulating or policing. And which included things like helplines for people with side effects, trying to make sure that people don't use these drugs as a first line of, or first option, so to say, as opposed to other things. Which could be counseling, you name it, whatever it is. They didn't want to that was what was supposed to happen. They didn't want people just buying these drugs anytime they needed them like it was candy. Obviously, that didn't happen. So, Eli Lilly, with their drug Cialis, violated six of those principles that they were supposed to pledge not to violate. Partially complied with two of the principles and fully complied with one principle. I like to know what that principle was, but they complied fully with it. Pfizer's Viagra consistently violated five of the principles, partially complied with one principle, and fully complied with two principles. I guess they get a, a an F, but they're closer to a D. Alright, Bayer Healthcare, Glasgow Smith Klein and Merck, obviously tons of money in ED, so everyone's got to jump on the bandwagon, with Levitra. Consistently violated five principles, partially comply with three principles and fully complied with one principle. I really would like to know what principle they all fully complied with. But, as time went on, and this is how these major companies, Eli Lilly, Pfizer, 
Bayer, Glasgow Smith Klein, in Merck really care about how you react to these medications. Because obviously you can run into things like loss of hearing or vision or preapsium. I guess there's always a price to pay for anything that does something by breaking something to fix something. Of course, it all values what we would rather have working than not working, so we don't mind certain things breaking because we have more of a problem with certain other areas. Meanwhile, we would rather have this thing working than being able to see how we get to the grocery store for food or whatever it comes down to be. All right, so this is how much these multi-billion dollar companies care. And that leads us to the punchline. And this is their quote. I'm not saying it. The mechanism set up by pharma, P-H-R-M-A, this self-regulating agency to make sure that they take care of your safety as you hand them money. For consumers to make complaints does not function. Then <laughs> this is what it is. The, not those, not these people or call center or email log. The fax machine. I didn't say plural. The fax machine is typically not connected and complaints go unanswered. So, I could just picture this thing sitting in someone's closet. Oh, this ED drug, how's it act with my blood pressure medication? Is it messing with my antidepressants? I can't hear, I can't see. What do I do? Oh, I'll call the helpline. And if you're lucky, you get that G tone, so you know you're supposed to fax something. Well, Obviously, the billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of profit that they are making, obviously, not to be repetitive with the word obviously, are not quite enough to afford one of these newfound, dangled, high-tech machines called a fax machine. Or they don't have enough technicians to figure out how to connect the fax machine. Maybe it should be like a different type of ED drug for like these guys. And their words are, we were surprised by the findings. We did not expect this level of non-compliance. It is troubling to discover that executives at these companies are engaged in this level of duplicity. duplicity. Well, to me, when I think of executives, duplicity, fax machine, and like this type of stuff, I see a bunch of 12 to 14 year old adolescents running around not guys in suits and ties. Oh, unless they want to go to those fancy dinners. So think about that. Next time you go to buy an erectile dysfunction drug, your entire life is depending on guys who do not know how to hook up a fax machine. And that is it for this health research report in brief on how the pharmaceutical companies of the world care about you and your ED. All right, catch you guys in a bit.